What's up everyone, Patrick here, welcome back. Moving on to another word problem dealing with factoring. So we're told a rectangular prism has a volume of this expression 32x cubed y minus 18xy cubed. And we have to find a potential or potential expressions for the length, width, and height of the prism. And then in part B, we have to use those values in part A to find the surface area of the prism. So we've done questions like this, similar questions in the past. Let me just erase this for some room. Now let's do a quick just general review when we're working with a rectangular prism 3D object. So the characteristics for a rectangular prism are the length, the width, and then the height. And we know that the volume of a rectangular prism is equal to what? Length times width times height, like that. And we're also going to have to work with the surface area in part B. And what is the surface area? It's basically the area of all of the faces added together. And notice that each face or... Um, yeah, each face is going to have another corresponding face that has the exact same area. So notice like this face over here, the front face, its area is going to be length times height. And then notice that that back face is also going to have an area of length times height. Or this side face is going to have an area of width times height. So is this side face width times height. And then the bottom and the top are going to be length times width. And so the surface area, there's multiple ways to show this. We can say two times length plus width plus two times width times height plus two times length times height. And then another way to show it is we could take out the two and we'd have length uh, times width plus width times height plus length times height. Like that, right? This and this are the same. So we could use either of those in part B. That's the surface area for a rectangular prism. Now, in order to use this, what we got to do is we got to find an expression for length, width, and height in order to plug into one of these formulas. And that's actually what we got to do in part A. So notice that we're given the volume as this expression over here, 32x cubed y minus 18xy cubed. But notice that this volume here, this expression, it's not in this format. Here, this format, we got volume equals length times width times height. Notice we're multiplying three expressions. Here, we are subtracting expressions. So we can't really tell from here what's the length, what's the width, what's the height. We have to change this in a way where we're going to have expressions multiplying, meaning that we got to factor it. And then once you factor, you'll have a bunch of factors that are multiplying. Then we can get expressions for the length, width, and height. So that is the first step. And it's obvious because we're in a factoring chapter. So usually these questions you're going to have to factor. Question is, how do we factor this? First thing we always check, can we take out a greatest common factor? And notice between the 32 and the 18, we could definitely take out a two. And then notice that there's an X in both expressions. So we take out X to the one, which is the lowest exponent. Notice that there's a Y in both expressions. The lowest exponent is one. So we could take out a two X Y from this initially. So what would we be left with in the brackets? 32 divided by two would give us 16. X to the three over X to the one would give us X squared. The Y's cancel out minus 18 over two is nine. X's cancel out. Y to the three over Y to the one gives us Y squared like that. So we took out a greatest common factor. Now we got 16 X squared minus nine Y squared. So let's see just on the side here if that will factor. And hopefully by this point, you're fairly comfortable in recognizing that this here is a difference of squares. Okay, this is in that difference of squares format, which ends up being this right here. We could put this in that format 
uh, we could rewrite this as, and sorry, this is not y, my bad, this is x over here. So we could rewrite this as 4x squared minus the 9y squared, we could rewrite as 3y squared. So notice that it's in this format now where the a is 4x, the b is 3y like that. And so if we plug it into this formula, we'll end up with 4x minus 3y, right? a minus b, 4x plus 3y like that, a plus b. Now, your teacher, your particular teacher may not be using this formula, and they may just allow you to go straight from here to here, right? You take the square root of this for those terms, the 4x, you take the square root of this, the 9y squared, the square root of that is 3y, you put those on the ends, and then you change the signs. Uh, but just in case your teacher wants you to put it in this format first and then go to that, that's exactly how you do it. So going back to our main work over here, basically we end up with 2xy, 4x minus 3y, 4x plus 3y. Okay, so this original expression that we have for the volume and this, those are the exact same thing. If you take this expand it, you'd end up with that original expression. So let me actually put this up here. Or uh, you know what, I'll keep this and then I'll bring back the general formula for a volume. And notice now we can match both of these formats together because here we are multiplying and over here we are multiplying. And so what we can do, one potential for expressions for the length, width, and height, we could say the length is equal to this bracket, which is 2xy. The width is equal to this bracket, which is 4x minus 3y. And then the height is equal to that bracket, 4x plus 3y. Okay, so that's a potential. And the reason why it says potential in part A is because there's a bunch of different combinations you can have. You can actually rearrange these because they're multiplying, doesn't matter which order you multiply them. So you can maybe make this the length, this the height, and then maybe this the width. You can rearrange them in that way uh, in terms of keeping these brackets, but classifying them differently. Another way you can rearrange it is with particularly with this expression. So what you can do is another way to write it is you can maybe write this as, for example, 2x, and then the other bracket, we would put the y with this expression. Kind of like that. And then we got the 4x plus 3y on the end. So maybe if you wanted to, you could say the length is 2x, the width is y times 4x minus 3y, and then the height is 4x plus 3y. Or rearrange those classifications, however. Or maybe you could put the x and the y together in this bracket, and then the 2 would just be by itself, and you could just say the length is 2, and then the width is xy 4x minus 3y, the height is 4x plus 3y. So there's a bunch of different combinations with how you can classify the length, the width, and then the height. I went with this one personally, but there's a bunch of different ways you can do it. The most important part is getting to here, and then however you wanna multiply those three expressions, you could rearrange it however you want. Okay, so there's a bunch of different combinations, but I'm gonna use this personally, and then once we have that, once we have these classifications, you know what? Let's actually write them up here just to give myself some room because we're going to be expanding, I feel like, a lot now when we are getting this, um, this surface area. Another thing I want to mention is no matter how you classify them, whether you maybe put the Y over here and then the length is 2X instead, as I was mentioning before, what's nice is no matter how you classify the length, the width, and then the height, when you plug it into the surface area formula and then you expand it like we're about to do, you should get that same value or that same expression at the very end for the surface area because it's not going to matter how you expand it. It's all going to simplify to that same expression. So if you do this and you classify it in a different way, 
just make sure that when you are getting that final surface area expression, it's the same as the one I'm about to get. Okay, so again, we can use either of these. What I will do, let me think here, which one is better? Again, it doesn't matter, it'll be the same. Uh, I'll just use this one over here, this second one. So we'll say surface area is equal to two. Now over here, just be careful with how you plug stuff in. We got the length times the width. So the length we said is two x y, and the width is four x minus three y. You can maybe even write it above here just to really make sure that you're not slipping up with anything. And then we got the plus width times height. So we'll have the 4x minus 3y, 4x plus 3y. So this is the width times the height. And then we'll have plus the length times the height, which is the 2xy times the 4x plus 3y. All right, this is the length times the height like that. And then we have this 2 at the end. And I think it looks all good. Right? Whenever I got all these expressions going on like this, I like to make sure every step is correct because going back and changing things can be quite painful when you're working with a lot of expressions like this. But it looks all good to me. So if we expand this, let's expand in the bracket. We'd end up with 8x squared y minus 6xy squared after we take the 2xy multiplied by the 4x and the 3y. And then over here, when we multiply these two brackets, remember that was just actually the same difference of squares that we factored, all right? It factored into these two brackets. So when we expand it, we would just end up getting that 16x squared minus 9y squared after expanding these two brackets. And then over here, um, 2xy times 4x plus 3y, it's actually the same thing as this, except instead of a negative over here, we're going to end up with a positive, but it would be the exact same expressions in between the, uh, the sign. And we got plus 6xy squared, like that. Okay, and then from here, you want to simplify the like terms within the bracket. You could also distribute the two if you want at this point. I'm going to simplify first. Notice that this and this will cancel out minus six plus six. Those are like terms because of the combination of exponents. Notice that this and this are like terms. So we'd end up with two times 16 x squared y. And then over here, we'll have plus 16x squared minus 9y squared. All right, there's no other like terms here that we could simplify any further. And then finally, I would distribute the two. 32x squared y plus 32x squared minus 18y squared. So that right there ends up being the final expression for the surface area. And again, no matter how you rearrange or what combination you use for the length, width, and height with these expressions, after plugging it into the surface area formula, whichever one of these expanding is, simplifying the like terms, you should end up with that same expression.